On today's episode, a rant about using templates and all websites looking the same. Let's rock and roll. Hey, designer friends, what is up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome back to Flux, where we talk about design and how you can become a designer and make a living as a designer. And today, using templates. Today, there are so many amazing, high quality, just beautiful templates out there whether you're buying them on like theme forest or you're using the webflow templates library there's just stuff that looks so good it's very very tempting to just take it and use it out of the box just change the text change some images and just have a beautiful website you can put it in your portfolio a client's going to be happy why not use it now here's the thing the problem with it is that it really really first of all you end up going to looking like everybody else and that's a huge problem if you want to build yourself as a designer. But the th second thing and even more important thing is it really devalues your work, right? If you're basically just buying a template and changing a bunch of images and text, your clients can do that on their own. And that's not really the reason why they're hiring you, right? If you want to be a designer, if you want to be a high level designer and be paid for your thinking and your creativity, right? Then you need to understand your client's problem. You need to create a custom solution that is unique to your client's need and just do something for them, custom made for them. A core part of what we do as designers is to differentiate, right? There are so many businesses today, offers today, everybody's trying to sell you something. I don't even remember the numbers, but there's like a person sees 100,000, whatever, 10,000 visual messages per day or something like this. Everything looks the same. And if you want to do your work and if you want to serve your clients properly, you need to help them differentiate, meaning to look different, to stand out. And you can do that if you're just using a template. And so especially, by the way, if you're using tools like Webflow, which the core reason to use Webflow is that you can actually do custom work, right? And you have to do that without like a developer or something like that. So if you're going to use something like that, use a tool like Webflow, basically using a template kind of defeats the purpose of actually going ahead and learning this tool and using this tool, right? You could have taken a WordPress template and, you know, be done with it. So I want to encourage you. I know it's easy. I know there is beautiful work out there, right? And I'm not dissing the, the designers who are creating these templates. They are doing fantastic work. Visually, it's very nice. But if you want to best serve your clients, then you have to think beyond the template and you don't want to end up looking like a clone. Now, I will say kind of like a, a side note or the only excuse maybe to do that is if you are a designer very, very early on and you just haven't built your visual skills yet, right? And if you're gonna try and do it on your own, it's just going to end up looking ugly, maybe because maybe you're not very good with layout or with type, then this is a solution to kind of get into a good first base and try to work from there. However, that's th that's what it is, right? It's a good solution for people who are very, very early on. But if you want to make the move from a junior, an amateur designer at beginning of their craft and move up to step up to become a high value designer, try to work with better clients and charge more money, then you have to step beyond the template. Now, even if, so if you're watching this right now and you feel like, oh, I'm at this beginner stage, I think I actually need this because it helps me. I'm not really good with typography. I'm not really good, you know, with layout. So it's, it's at least going to have, help me have like a decent looking website at the end. Then I want to, I want you to think, how can you step how can you use that template in a non-obvious way? And a lot, a few examples of how you do this is first of all, if at least you bought a template, then at least go with a non-obvious font and don't go with like a free font or a Google font. Because again, this is the obvious. You're taking a template and then you're taking the free resource. You're basically doing what everybody else is doing. So if you are working with a template, at least go with a unique font that nobody else has. And hint, you're not gonna find it on the font or like a free font. You're gonna have to pay extra and fonts are not that expensive. You can get amazing custom premium font for $15, for $50. So at least get an amazing, typeface that's going to set you apart. And then if you do that, and if you combine that with perhaps custom photography, so maybe you're not amazing as a designer yet, but if you come up with custom photography that's going to help you stand out, then the use of custom photography and 
custom typography is going to have so much visual impact that at least maybe the template is going to be a little bit kind of like um, transparent. Maybe people will not notice that you're using a template. So these are my tips, but my ask for you is to not end up looking like everybody else. Help your clients to differentiate themselves and stand out by creating custom work for them. That's it for today. Make sure that you're subscribed for more design-related freelancing videos, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.